artificial intelligence and robotics. Um, they've gotten to the point where they're creating really lifelike artificial limbs. So it's not like other sci-fi movies where in the future people have robotic arms and everything. We're talking things that look like flesh and blood. And they're even able to link them to the brain, so you can control them with your brain. So it won't okay, be so it won't be perfectly future fiction. Future. Or? This is mid twenty first century. Okay. Uh, they even have replacement eyes and ears that have become available. At this point, they're still pretty expensive. But you know, you're blind. Replace your eyes, you're fine. Still pretty expensive at this point, but will become cheap by the end of the century. They've even managed to map the human brain completely, so they can actually tell where everything happens in our brain. And this is, as much as that might sound fantastic, they've predicted earlier than what I'm saying that they're going to be able to do that. What's the theory now of what they're able to see? I don't remember what. I just remember I was being hard on science by pushing it back so far. Right. <laughs> because I don't want to do anything earlier than 2050 because it'll be too easy to prove right or wrong. But, you know, that could bite me in the butt because this could happen in 2030. And they'll be like, oh, he's wrong. But who cares? Because it won't affect the end product. So this, that's a big deal because... Um, because they're able to treat a lot more, obviously, things are wrong with the brain. But as much as it's fully mapped, they still don't fully understand it. It's, that's still to come. Neural artificial intelligence becomes more prominent. Right now, the, the issue with artificial intelligence is that it's not intelligent. Everything they've created, even the most complex artificial intelligence, a cockroach is smarter than these computers. Computers excel at repetitive tasks. We, we go over this. We just talked about this the other day when we're looking at our tasks that we do with mini wargaming. And we talked about what we could get other people to do so that our time would be, would be more free to do more content or other things. And we looked at it and we realized that a lot of the repetitive tasks are basically what we can get other people to do. Right. But when it comes to the creative tasks and the common sense tasks, those are harder to outsource. Not because people don't have common sense, but it's hard to teach. It's intuition, teach. right? It's the, that's a lot to teach yeah. a person. Yeah. Now a computer, a lot of people think that computers are going to take over all the jobs in the world. In reality, they're going to take over all the middle jobs all the accounting related things, all the stuff where you just crunch numbers all day long, those are the jobs that computers are going to take over. They're not going to be able to take over creative jobs. They're not even going to be able to be garbage men. Robots won't be able to be garbage men because think about the incredible complexity it is to be a garbage man. You look, how do you know something's garbage? Could you write down on a piece of paper a procedure that I could then write into a computer program that would help a robot determine what is garbage and what isn't? Could you even explain to me what is garbage in a way that somebody who's never seen it before would know how to find it? Are you talking about stuff that isn't like in pails on the side of the road? No, that, that is. That or, is what what, what, or what if stuff has fallen out of it? How do they know to pick it up? Or maybe, it's, maybe there's something on the side of the road like a car. How are they gonna, when they come along, how are they going to know that this bike or the scooter is not part of the garbage collection for that day? How would you explain it to them? In such a way that a robot who sees things in terms of lines and shapes is going to be able to differentiate between garbage and not garbage. That'd be tough, eh? It's impossible right now. Pattern recognition is one of the great problems that they're having with robotics, with AI, because computers have a hard time doing pattern recognition. Now, they have ways around that, like we have barcodes, and they even have like 3D codes and those Q codes and stuff, but those are just like... Pattern? What about like facial recognition? They have that, but that's still... It's still like matching faces. They don't, they, don't, they don't even know they're looking at a face, though. That's the problem. Like like, don't get me wrong. Pattern recognition has come a long way. But if you were to put a robot... like They, they have robots now that they're just barely being able to get to maneuver around a room that's been not, that's been not pre-set up, like that's been randomized. Right. Like facial recognition, that's different. Every face has the same structure, right? It's just the shape, so they can kind of look at the unique shapes. That's easy. I can break your face down to bits and bytes. Just a, a location of everything, right? And most likely no other face will have exactly the same position on your face. That's easy. But now, put your face there along with a bunch of other objects and tell it to identify the face. It has a harder time. Now tell it to navigate through those objects and get to the face. How is it supposed to... Like a cockroach can do that, but computers have a hard time. I guess what you're saying is right now... Right now, AI sucks. And it's because they've been trying to use computers to do so. so no Skynet? They're not going to take over? That's, no, not, not likely. Not, not in the next 100 years. Oh. And um, who would be dumb enough to program a computer that would do that? Well, it makes for good movies, but it's not very realistic. So what, they, what they're currently trying to do is they're trying to, instead of, because right now they have computers trying to do AI, right? But a computer is a series of electrons moving back and forth between things. It doesn't really imitate what the brain does. 
And since they'll have the human brain fully mapped, they'll have a better idea of how the brain works. And so the brain is our source of intelligence. Even small insects and cockroaches and stuff have a neural center. They have a lot less neurons than we do, a lot less, and yet with that small, tiny amount of neurons, they're still able to do better than our most powerful computers. In For the most part, some people, you got to... Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Or even things like, you know, people take major injuries to their brain and they're still able to function with less neurons. Like, there's, it's a complex beast here. And so one of the areas of, um, of science right now is neural artificial intelligence, where they actually try to create something, a computer that is linked together, not by the computer chips and the transistors like all the other ones are, but more like our brain is, where it's a series of neurons and it's a learning machine. It's like a, a network. Yeah, and, but it's, it's a, and, they, and it learns rather than being, being instructed. Hmm. That's how we really, we grow, we learn, we have experience. Um, we're not really instructed. Our parents teach us things, but it's still through experience that we really get to know what the difference between garbage and not garbage is. Did your parents ever teach you what garbage is or isn't? Not really, but... No, I just saw them, wa I just watched them throw stuff in the garbage. I'm like, oh, okay, that's garbage. Now picture a robot trying to do that same thing. How would it know? Since I've watched that person pick up that object and put it in there, I now know that that object is garbage. See, that's dangerous because like, a human could fall in garbage, and they could like, pick up a human and put him in the garbage and kill him, not or, meaning to kill him. Or it can see me throw this out, and then assume that every time it sees this, it's garbage. Yeah. But what if it's full? Or what if you want to use it for terrain? Exactly. Right? <laughs> well, then you're getting into other things, too. So neural artificial intelligence is becoming more prominent, but it's still a long ways away. Computers still fail to show true intelligence, emotions, even consciousness. That's a whole other subject. They're not really there yet. So AIs, and, and part of the reason is because our computers stopped getting faster, and so it's harder to run these experiments and everything. So last thing that we'll talk about is politics and world events. So I don't have exact details for which countries do what to what countries, because that's a little trickier, especially in the near future. Um, like we can talk about all sorts of crazy stuff like North Korea starting a war and Canada being annexed into the United States and the European Union or the United Nations um, collapsing or we could talk about all these things but in reality that's a little harder to predict because we're so close to it that you know those things could happen sooner or later. It's a little close to home. Yeah but I, you know I'll have to make something up because I just need to. Um, so in politics we have the strain of fossil fuel depletion and economic collapse through the computer industry slowing caused rising tensions between many countries, wars continue to increase, and World War III will actually break out at this time. So, Who starts it? I, like I said, I don't have oh. those details. World War III breaks out, but it's not like World War I and II where it was like Axis versus Allies. It's not like the one side versus the other. It's more like a worldwide war between countries. And so it doesn't, it's not a simple two-sided war. It's more like smaller wars all over the world. Well, worse than it is now. We currently have smaller wars all over the world. But I'm talking like pretty much every country is involved. Um, and this is involving, especially because of global warming, we're having rising sea levels, which is actually losing land. Mm -hmm. There are countries that are losing land. And so all of a sudden you're getting this flood of refugees. Japan, Japan there's, um, oh, what's the one that's completely at sea level? That could actually be, is it Bangladesh? I can't remember. There's one country that there's millions of people in. And by the end of the century, if we continue the way that we are, their country will no longer exist. So those people have been pushed out of their country because it doesn't happen all at once. Oh, it yeah. happens slowly. I remember hearing about that recently. I don't know why. I heard yeah, it. yeah. Was and it in a movie or was it on the I, news? I don't, I don't know. know. It might have been on the news because it's real. This is real. And so they'll get pushed out of their country. So you've got millions of people all of a sudden just refugees in another country. Think about the tensions that would create and the, the strain on resources that would create. Because it's the third world country on top of that. It's not like these people can be like, oh, we have all this excess food and money to give you. We'll give you jobs and all that. It doesn't happen that way. So, so all these issues, fossil fuel issues, like the typical thing, like the oil wars, that'll be part of it. Um, just all these things together. Just, and, you know, the Cold War over quantum computers. There'll be, you know, as soon as one country is thought to have a quantum computer developed, everybody's going to be against that one to try to go after them and send in their spies and their assassins and everything. And so it, during this World War III, we'll actually have several countries that'll be completely destroyed or decimated or conquered. In other words, a lot of countries are going to cease to exist autonomously. When I say a lot, I don't mean that so that there's only three countries left. There's still going to be lots of them left. But there's going to be a lot of, like, the world map will have to be completely rewritten. It's kind of like when Russia broke up and all of a sudden all the maps were really obsolete because 
this, this big mass of land was no longer a big mass of land, it was a bunch of countries. So World War III happens. And I know that's not a unique thing to Dark Potential talking about World, World War III, and that's fine. I just, I, I, I'm not going to make this happy, peachy future. It's going to be, it's going to be hard for humanity. So no utopia for you. <coughs> now I need a drink. My throat's starting to get scratchy. No utopia. Now, mind you, I'm not going to make this a bleak future. Uh, we've lived through world wars, world wars before, the Vietnam War and all these other wars, and we're going to continue to live through wars, so it's, it's more a way of life. But this will be bigger than any other war that has been seen. But it's not going to be like, it's not going to, like, by the time that we're doing Dark Potential, the World War III won't necessarily have affected a lot. It's just more a step towards the end. So that's it. That's the mid-21st century. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy, eh? Well, you think about how much happens in a 25-year um, period. Heck, 25 years ago, we were barely born. Yeah. And just think about how much has happened in our lifetime, technology-wise, for one thing, yeah, world events-wise, for another. Atari, now we're on to PlayStation 3 and possibly more. Yeah. yeah a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah. And PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 are getting old. Yeah. So we're on to something even newer soon, I'm sure. Yeah. On computers, obviously, are getting strong, faster, too. So that's it for this one. Anyway, this is Matthew and Dave for Mini Wargaming. Stay tuned for the next video. We'll be talking about the late 21st century. We're going to have some interesting discoveries. So stay tuned, and happy Wargaming.